In 1913, New York was the entertainment capital, hosting 200 plays a year. But Broadway was making room for moving pictures, or the flickers as they were known to their loyal audiences. Moving picture theaters were growing larger and more lavish. Likewise, audiences expected better quality movies. And what said quality better than Sarah Bernhardt? the world's greatest actress. New York film companies worked day and night to meet the demand. Leading the pack was Biograph. Director D.W. Griffith was adding close-ups and cross-cutting to the cinema's vocabulary. The movies captured their viewers, but the hitmakers on Broadway looked down on them and called them crude entertainment made by immigrants for immigrants. Beatrice DeMille, widow of playwright Henry DeMille, ran a theatrical agency. Her son Cecil was her office manager. He was also an actor and a playwright. And at 32, he had a wife, Constance, and a daughter, Cecilia, to support. Walking down 44th Street, to the Claridge Grill took his mind off his financial troubles. He was joined by his two best friends, Samuel Goldfish, later Goldwyn, and Jesse Lasky. Usually these lunches were fun, but they hadn't been lately. Sam was dispirited, tired of being a glove salesman. Jesse was disheartened by the recent failure of a nightclub venture. Cecil was discouraged by a series of flop plays. What these friends shared was a spirit of adventure and a need to achieve. They might not find backing for another play, but there were investors for movies. The Claridge menu became a drawing board. They next headed for the Lambs Club in search of an actor who could play the lead in The Squaw Man, a play that Jesse had wisely bought. Luckily, the popular actor Dustin Farnham was in the club. He had played the Squaw Man on tour and was willing to star in the film. The Jesse L. Lasky Feature Play Company made Cecil director general and gave him a crew that included co-director Oscar Apfel, a stage veteran and recent filmmaker. The story of the Squaw Man took place in Wyoming, so on December 10, 1913, Director General Cecil left New York with his crew, bound for Flagstaff, Arizona, the perfect place to shoot a feature-length western. Cecil and Oscar had written about ten pages of scenario when they arrived in Flagstaff. A decision was quickly made. Find some money and buy tickets to California. The Alexandria was more than a hotel. It was a center of film commerce. Cecil quickly learned of a studio that he could rent, but it was not in Los Angeles where all the film companies were working. It was in Hollywood, and in 1913, Hollywood was little more than a rural suburb. Much of its acreage comprised farms or orchards. Even so, Cecil rode the seven miles into Hollywood to see the potential studio on Vine Street at Selma Avenue. It was a converted barn. Cecil wasn't put off by the rural setting. He rented the barn and began casting the Squaw Man. For Cecil, co-directing with Oscar Apfel was a valuable learning experience. And for actors who had come from New York, as most of them had, Acting in an orchard was exotic. Equally exciting was location filming at Mount Palomar in the snow. Cecil paid attention to character development, action, and settings. There was genuine enthusiasm for this project. Everyone knew that this was the first feature film being shot in Hollywood. 
Things were going well, perhaps too well. Cecil's project was regarded in some quarters as a bit too ambitious. As he pushed himself to finish filming, strange things began to occur. Cecil saw the project in danger, real danger. So much was at stake. Cecil thought of his career, of his family's life in the theater, his mother's faith in him, the steadfastness of his wife and child. And of course, he thought of the friends who had taken this gamble with him. They were depending on him to succeed. Cecil drew on hidden reserves, prayed, and then he looked for a way to save the Squaw Man. 